Hello everybody. I'm here today to talk with you about creating reports within Sage Intact. So let's jump right into it. From my menu, I'm going to navigate to my report center here. And one of the first things I want to touch on before we get into this is that the, one of the great things about Sage Intact is they have dozens and dozens of pre-baked in, pre-built reports within the system. Uh, this eliminates the need for when you're first starting on Sage Intact to have to create a number of reports. Um, a lot of these standard reports are common reports, cash flow, balance sheets, uh, profit and loss statements, APAR reports. Um, and it's really great because it eliminates the need to have to come into a system and then create a bunch of reports in a system that you're learning. Um, and a number of these reports people stick with. Uh, as they are operating their business, but people oftentimes expand on that and create new reports, which is what I'm here to show you today. And as you can see, there are a lot of reports in here, some of which have been created um, and some of which are existing pre-baked in reports within the report writer. So tip number one is best practice within Sage Intact is to actually start with one of these pre-baked in reports and then modify it to make your need to fit your company's needs instead of creating a whole new report from scratch. So I'm going to jump into this profit and loss summary here and edit it. And I'm going to duplicate this. I want a new profit and loss. And I'm going to make this my profit and loss year to date by department. So if we scroll back down here, you can see here's my new report. I'm going to go ahead in here and edit it because, again, we just duplicated. So it's the same settings as that other report. And I want to leave the report name. The report's active. And I'm just going to go down this report, these different tabs here on the left-hand side of the report writer just to show you really how easy the report writer is um, to navigate and user-friendly it is. So if we go to rows, you can see that here's all my rows that are in my profit and loss, which may not look like a lot now. So I'm going to go ahead and just preview this report to see what it actually looks like. Okay, so this is the report now. Obviously, it's expanded by location, not department, and we'll get to that. So say on the rows, okay, I don't want to see my revenue expanded and my cost of revenue expanded anymore. I just want to see those as one line. So if we navigate back, I'm going to go ahead and collapse here, revenue and cost of revenue. And if we preview the report again, you can see those lines have collapsed. And that's very easy. I mean, literally, that was two clicks of a button there. And that's happened. Um, that change has taken effect. And likewise, if I wanted to re-expand, it's simply another click of the button. Moving into columns. So you can see here that we have current year to date and that it's expanded by locations. Now, this reports by department. So if I click this drop down and say, OK, now I want to expand by my departments, not locations, and make that change. And then again, we'll preview the report here. And you can see now I have a profit and loss. And instead of being expanded by locations, we're expanding by the different departments. Again, a few clicks of the mouse, very simple, easy to change, and an interactive, easy to use interface. Computations, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on because we can spend a, a, a good number of uh, uh, hours talking just about the power of computations. But this would be if you wanted to do some sort of computation, say a percentage, maybe what's my operating expenses as a percentage of revenue, um, gross margin, prime cost if you're in a hospitality industry. Um, computations don't have to be percentages they can be addition subtraction uh, other operations a lot of power there um, we'll probably do another web series like this just on computations filters if I wanted to for some reason come in and filter this to only show a specific department um, or any other dimension if I only wanted this report to be filtered for a specific customer or customer group I have set up um, a lot of power here. I can create, just define here if I want my book to be cash or accrual. Moving into the format tab, again, a lot of uh, things that can be changed here, but just some highlights. Say I want to have my numbers rounded instead of showing all the pennies. I can round in dollars, come to page setup. Say I want to put profit and loss, but then I also want to say year to date by department. 
beneath it. And rows and totals is how you want your rows and totals to format. Again, there's a lot of power here that I'm not going to go into. But let's just preview this again to see my changes take place. So you can see now that the pennies have disappeared. My report is automatically rounded. And if I want to go print this report, you'll see that now my secondary header, my year to date by department is showing up. So again, that was a very, very, very quick overview of the report writer. But again, a lot of power. Everything's very easy. Clicks of a button. Um, and very uh, easy to understand and easy to learn uh, user interface. And now I'm just going to save this report because I have it the way I like it. And boom. Now we have that report. And if we come back down here, you can see here's my profit and loss year to date by department. And I can go ahead and run this report. And here it is all saved up. So the next time I want to run it, I can go ahead and run this report. And thank you for listening in today. Again, this was a quick overview, um, but we hope you come back and listen to more of our video series on quick tips and tricks on how to use Sage Intact. And please be sure to like and follow uh, Reinheimer Baker on uh, social media and our YouTube channel. Thank you so much.